is your raid stuck on a certain raid encounter? Do you feel like your performance is flatlined? Learning how to navigate Warcraft logs is the answer you need. Hey, what's up guys? It's Riggs again. Today we have a very important video for y'all. We have a lot of questions asking what is the biggest area to improve on? You know, how can I get better? What am I doing wrong? Well, here you go. This is the best answer to all those questions. Today I'm going to teach you how to review your logs and improve from that. So let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start here. What is Warcraft Logs? Warcraft Logs is, is it's an advanced combat logging website that gives you information about every single interaction that occurs on any given, you know, in any given raid encounter, key, or any of that stuff, right? Like, it's just, it's it's basically including all the numbers and even the positional data, and we'll get into all that stuff as, as the video kind of goes on. But it's basically just everything that you need to know from a, you know, data standpoint on the website and also the companion app that we covered in our add-on video, so... Uh, who is Warcraft Logs for? Anyone. That's a short answer. And it, it's basically anyone that's interested in whether it's evaluating your own gameplay, you know, looking at leaderboards, you know, uh, that could be just, you know, race to world first stuff, uh, you know, being able to see the guilds that are up there, how many pull counts that they've done on things. You know, you could go here and look and see. It's like how many pulls did, you know, Method take on Vigilant Guardian, or, you know, pull counts are there it shows you the the progress that these guild are, guilds are making you know it also has like youtube embeds for each respective boss fights you know it just it, there is a a multitude of things that this that this website covers um and it, it, it's not just limited to race the world first stuff this thing you know it has like key leaderboards uh you know all stars you know for some people that are more into that side of things you know like our guild specifically we private logs so nobody's really worried about the all-star things but i know a lot of people are in guilds that you know that's you know that may be your motivation every night when you log on it's just to try to put up the best all-star numbers that you can and you know compare yourselves against other you know top players and things like that or maybe let's say that you're someone that just wants to look at you know the statistics for any given boss fight it's like okay well i'm curious what skolex looks like from you know you can go to pick different percentiles and things like that and just kind of look and see where your class stacks up on any given fight and just kind of like use that as a baseline you know so um i guess in short it basically it can be anyone it doesn't matter if you're just somebody that's looking for casual data or very specific and in-depth data okay um how can this how can warcraft logs make you a better player uh, you know, it, it may, it's just, it's allowing you to go back and look at your performance, you know, break down the details in a specific way and, you know, be able to compare yourself to other players and yeah, iron, iron out timings, whether it be from, you know, a healer, a tank or a DPS standpoint, and, you know, being able to go through these logs, like, you know, during progress or even on farm, all this stuff is very relevant information. So, you know, we're going to go over each one of these and I'm going to explain to you guys how you're going to be able to learn how to do this. If you have no experience doing it, or again, maybe you're somebody that's just used logs, but you're not real savvy with it we're going to get into some of that stuff uh pretty in detail all right uh so we're going to start out here how do you log a fight all right so first things first you're going to log in you're going to go to your system tab and then you're going to go to the network tab and you're going to make sure that advanced combat logging is enabled okay once this is enabled you're going to get an add-on that has a logging function and you can turn this on for whatever area of the game that you are wanting to focus on and you see here for mine is basically just keys and rates but maybe you're somebody that also does arena you can also log arenas and then you see the other options here as well so that's how you get it set up in the first place so again make sure you enable it in your interface or your system settings and then you also get an add-on that auto logs when you zone in to whatever respective area of the game that you're wanting to look at okay and then once you do that you're going to either whether it be via the companion app or the desktop client either one you know you can do it live log you can do an upload log like uh, you know normal like after the raid or something and this is where you just navigate to the log you name it and then you upload it and then once you have this information in then that's where you see you know what we were just looking at where it's basically it will show up on your calendar so this is our guild calendar you know you can also let's say you're in a guild but you don't want to upload all of your stuff to the guild you also have a personal log. So this is something that, like if I'm ever playing my alt and like some random pugs, I'm not going to spam the guild feed with this. So you see here, it's just like, you know, I'll upload them to my personal profile, you know, where there's some pug keys or, you know, uh, pug raid information. All right. So now that we've covered how to log a fight, we're going to get to how to navigate a fight that you have logged, right? So now that you've already got that in there, it's like, what next? 
So again, we're going to, and the, the one log that we're going to be focusing on today is just a pug raid that I did on my second Death Knight. Something I've just been gearing up an Alliance character now that they've got Cross Faction in the, in the, in the game. So we're going to be just using Skull Lakes as an example. So again, to get here, all I did was go to my personal logs. So on your profile, you have your personal logs and then your guilds. And then once you're on the calendar, you select the raid that you're, or the log that you're wanting to look at. And then you select the respective fight that you want to look at. Okay. And from here, you know, this is where you were going to, this is kind of like the starting point of like, you know, this is where you're going to get into the analytical side of things and then be able to compare stuff and things like that. So, all right. So now that we've covered how to get here and, you know, everything to set up to get to this point, now we're going to just go through some practical application of, you know, using the website and me just kind of showing you guys some, you know, fundamental stuff that I do on pretty much a nightly basis. Um, and again, we're going to be using my second death night here as a decoy or training dummy, whatever you want to call it, and kind of be going from there. So this is a fight where, you know, I went into a Roy Pug on Skolex and, you know, I want to click on my name and then immediately just kind of look and see what I am doing, you know, looking and seeing, you know, damage breakdowns, you know, going and looking at casts. This is also a very big point of focus. And one thing that you want to be doing, like this is probably like between your damage breakdown and your casts, these are probably like the main two tabs that you're going to be looking at for the most part. And, you know, it, one key part here is it's like, you know, it, it, depending on what you're looking for, if this is something that you're wanting to just look at in your raid, you know, you, you already kind of have to have an understanding of what this needs to look like. But like in my case here, this is something that I'm wanting to figure out maybe what I'm doing wrong or like how I can improve my damage. Okay. And in order to do that, uh, what I ended up doing was I I will just show you guys real quick, walk you through how to do it. So in the event that you're wanting to compare yourself to someone else to figure out how to improve, all you're going to do is you're going to click on the little, the three bars up here in the top left corner. Then you're going to go to the rankings for whatever respective boss that you're wanting to look at. And then you sort it by your class and your spec. Okay, and then you can get even more detail with this because you also need it to match, you know, roughly, you know, fight time, item level, making sure that you have the, the same amount of legendaries. Okay, so again, what you're going to do is go and you set all these parameters up top to something that's similar to what you're going to have. So, you know, obviously don't want to be looking at somebody that's like 280 item level when you're sitting there at 260 or something like that. You also want to make sure the difficulty is the same. The patch number is the same. And then, and then make sure that, you know, when you're scrolling through here, all this information is, you know, visible and you're wanting to find something that matches up with what you have going on. So you want to make sure that they have the same legendaries and you want to make sure that they have the same covenant. That's like the biggest two things and the same fight time. So, you know, when I'm scrolling through here, you're again, you're going to look at what, you know, your information was. You can go to your, your summary if you need to find this stuff. This shows you, you know, your item level. It shows you, you know, what basically all the information that you have and you're wanting to go through here and find a comparable, you know, equal to, you know, somebody that's on the front page to find out what you want to adjust or change. So, you know, the one that we ended up picking here was Necro Burst because this is somebody that was around 260 item level. So this is two item levels higher. It's not really that big of a deal. Same legendaries, same covenant and things like that. And then once you, you know, have this, you're going to do the same thing with them. And you can either bounce back and forth this way on different tabs, but for just to, for the, you know, sake of, there's also a compare feature that you can use on the website, but it kind of gets a little bit sticky whenever you're trying to like go back and then like change stuff because it makes everything stay the exact same all the time. Um, you know, it's useful if you're just wanting to compare one tab to one tab, but when you're bouncing around between other stuff, it kind of gets a little bit not fluid, I guess is the best way to explain it. So I generally try to open them up in two separate tabs, but feel free to use the compare feature if you would like. Um, and then here, so, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is just go to Cass, and it's like, okay, this person's in the top 50 of that bracket, and then, you know, mine was lower than that. So it's like, I'm going to start here and then look at what I'm doing and compare that to what they're doing and figure out areas that I can, you know, improve. So as you see up front, you know, it's, I've got 63 scourge strikes to their 53. So it looks like that I'm, you know, pressing scourge strike more, same number of death coils. There's, you know, a, a, a disparity of two in festering strike. Well, you know, one in soul reaper, both have the same number of unholy blights and apocalypses. Uh, you know, they fit in one more dark transformation. You know, it's, it's roughly like within the same ballpark on the majority of this stuff. 
uh, for the most part. So then it's like, well, you know, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so then you're going to go to the damage done tab. And this is where it gets a little bit more information that you kind of got to sift through. So you kind of have to have an idea of knowing what you're looking for. And the first thing that I noticed here was, you know, why is my melee combined with my pet's melee and their melee is not? Their pet has their entire bar up here to themselves. And then you can also see the drop down bar on their pet. And then I noticed that, oh, wow, their pet is, you know, doing 200K, you know, 150 plus K damage with sweeping claws, you know, claw and things like that and all, all the, and whatnot. It's like, whoa, weird. Why is my pet not doing that? And the answer would be, you know, because I didn't have the auto cast turned on for my claw. You know what I mean? Because I'm just, I'm just kind of learning unholy. And this is, I'm using myself as an example of what not to do in this situation. And, you know, this is something that you guys can hopefully just kind of like see the process here and be able to make adjustments on your end or, you know, have something that's kind of like applicable. And let's say that maybe you're a mage and, you know, you're going through this and you're looking at the number of combusts that you're fitting in versus the number of, you know, the, the, someone else that you're comparing to. These are the type of things that you want to look for. Again, this is just all like information. A lot of these are on casts. Uh, you can even go to, let's go back like full screen on the log here. You know, if you really want to just go through specifically and look at kind of like what you're doing compared to someone else, um, you know, there's the timeline tab and this is something that you can scroll through the entire fight and it just kind of goes over what buttons you're pressing when. So it's just like on the opener. It's like you can see the, you know, the sequence of abilities that are used here. It's like, you know, popping A-bomb limb, you know, then festering strike and things like that. Yeah, this is something that you want to just pretty much use if you're wanting to look at a very specific point in the fight and looking at how someone is, uh, how you or someone else is sequencing like a very small window worth of abilities and things like that. And then, yeah, another part of this that I find myself using very frequently is the replay function. And on Skolex, this is something that, you know, you, you can look and see kind of like where you are at any given point during the fight, where you're going, you know, like for here, it's basically just like, am I staying near the other melee and dodging the circles or making sure that I don't get too close to the tanks and things like that. So like if I died, I can go back here and look and see where my character model actually was when it happened, you know, like in a hypothetical situation where let's say that one of these tanks accidentally took a warlike gateway or for whatever reason, just moved away from the boss and the boss hits the second, you know, the, the person that's closest to the tank and this person was further away. And for whatever reason I was closer, then it would kill me. This is something that I would be able to go back and look and see how this is happening. And again, this is in the replay feature. You're able to kind of zoom in and, and, and it's showing you here on the side what buttons you're pressing in the order that you're pressing them. You see here I'm just spamming Death Coil, you know, Scourge Strike, Outbreak, uh, and things like that. So it's just a very quick overview for the replay feature. We're going to go back to the Analyze tab. Uh, another thing, like, let's use, for example, like, over the span of an entire raid night, you know. I want to use the guild's log as an example here. You know, we had a handful of wipes on Anduin. So you can go to this. You can also select, like, very specific fights like this. And then you can select, like, two out of the three or something. This generally is something that would come into play if you have, you know, like, 20 or 30, like, on a prog night. Okay, so another another feature here that I kind of want to go over, and we I kind of just bounce back to this is one of our progression logs, and you can kind of see here how this uh, is lined up where you have like a, a bulk amount of data that you kind of want to go through, and let's say that you only want to see every pull that was, you know, below 50% or something. So you can go to select specific fights, and then we're going to go through and we're going to select every like blue, purple, and orange pull for the night and the kill. So, you know, and then... You will view those fights only. And then whenever you view those, this basically shows you up here how many wipes that you're looking at, which looks to be like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pulls. And let's say like out of your 12 pulls, you want to go and look and see maybe, you know, the deaths. This is something that you kind of want to go and look at and then see like who. And you always want to make sure to filter this to like probably three or four on any given fight. And then, you know, it shows like, you know, who's got problems that are, you know, dying early and something like that. Like if you have somebody that's like way far below someone else and you, you can kind of like identify patterns that way. This is an area of the logs that I find myself using very frequently is that this specific tab with the, the threshold for, you know, whatever number, let's say some fights like Jailer, you know, like P4 Jailer or something, you can sort this by five, you know, that kind of changes it. And what this allows people to do is, you know, if it's unfiltered, this is basically just going to be kind of disingenuous about what the numbers end up being so you want to have this uh, filtered specifically uh, and to be clear on how you guys you know how to read one of these charts 
the lower that you want your number to be, you want to be near the bottom of this. So 100% means you never, you were never one of the first three people that died on any one of these pulls that we're looking at. Uh, the lower that your number, the more often that you're dying. So each one of these pulls that are here, these are all really early deaths. So this means you died a little bit over halfway through the pull. This means you died at the very beginning of the pull, like 20% into the pull and, and things like that. So like the lower the numbers here, the worse. So you want to be near this end with, you know, as, as close to 100 as you possibly can. Okay, next thing we're going to be talking about is just kind of like buffs and debuffs. And this is another important area that you need to be comfortable with. It's like going here and looking whether this, you know, this could be something like, you know, you're trying to look and see on progression. It's like, are you getting your PIs at the right time as a fire mage or, a, you know, a Destro Warlock or something like that? Or even, you know, not even necessarily external buffs. Maybe it's your own personal CDs. You know, like, am I popping a bomb limb at the right time? You know, I, I, like, look at my uptime on, uh, you know, like a specific buff. Like if I want to go through here and look and see how often that I am, you know, like when I'm using my potion or how often, you know, like when I'm using my trinket or... You know, what's my uptime of my, you know, trinket or weapon or something that has like a proc and making sure that, you know, I'm, or, or is my unity bugged? That's like, it's like a pretty common problem in today's, in today's game where it's just like, you need to go in here sometimes and look and see if your unity is working properly. And if it's not, you know, take it off and put it back on. Um, so just being able to go through this, uh, again, buffs and debuffs and, and then, you know, sometimes you don't want to look at what you're applying. If you're going to want to look and see what's happening to the bosses, where you would select, you know, this this little drop-down menu here, you can go through and look at different uh, different classes or different, you know, you can look at classes as a whole. Like if I want to look at all the hunters, you can go that way. Or you can look at a specific hunter. Or you can just click this off altogether and change it to enemies. And this will be showing all the debuffs that have been applied to, uh, you know, Skolex on this this given pull. So, I mean, there's, there's a ton of information in pretty much every one of these tabs. I'm just trying to cover the high points to get you guys kind of like used to, you know, being familiar with this stuff. And again, that is just going and looking whether that be your damage breakdown like this. And, you know, this is basically just like a more detailed version of details in game and, you know, your casts and being able to use this to like kind of like compare yourself to other players. All right. So here we're going to be going over the healing tab. And I'm just going to kind of use this as, again, this is our Rigalon prog kill. It was like World 13th or something like that. And we're going to be using Dilemma as an example. So it's like, you know, this is, again, on our kill pool. It's like, you know, looking and seeing when he's fitting in defensive usages and things like that. So it's, you know, there's uh, all these bars kind of show. You can go up here and you can click off all these if you just want it to be completely empty. And then you can kind of look specifically at... You know, so now that it's empty, what you want to do is it's like you click on Ice Barrier. And then it's going to show you every time that he's using Ice Barrier and things like that. Or like, okay, well, when is he using his Healing Potion? You can click right here and you say that he used it right around the one and a half minute mark. Or same thing with Healthstone. This was used at the four and a half minute mark. You know, so it's like being able to go to this and look and see, you know, like when... Whether it be defensive or basically anything that's going to show up on the healing meter, which is any healing or absorbs are going to show up here. You, you use this to kind of gauge, you know, when you need to be using it. Are these used at optimal times and things like that? But this is a very important uh, area to kind of focus on. And again, this is also information that can be found via the cast tab. But this is also allowing you to see, you know, only healing abilities. And it's allowing you to see the actual values that you're getting out of them instead of just seeing whether or not you press them. All right, the next tab we're going to kind of go over real quick is uh, the mechanics tab. This is something that is not always like 100% right at the beginning of a tier, but like once, you know, things are, you know, worked out and all the log information is updated properly, this is something that you can go through and look and make sure that people are, uh, I think at one point this had like, you know, if you're getting hit by like certain mechanics, it would show up on here. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have that going. It doesn't look like that for Rigalon here, but this is something you can see and like, you know, who's using two potions and who's not. Who's, you know, who's getting value out of their health stones or healing potions and things of that nature. So this is something as, as like a raid leader or maybe even just a raider in the in the raid that you're trying to just find some constructive feedback. You know, go go to this tab and then you can see who's using the potions and, and things like that instead of having to go through and, you know, count them by going to buffs and then go through each potion or something like that. It's just a real quick way to find that information there. Okay, so now I just want to kind of go over, I guess, an actual practical application of using the replay tab right because i know skolex was it kind of just showed you guys what it looked like but now i'm going to actually just kind of show you exactly the type of things that you would be looking for in here and like p3 jailer was a 
very good example of when replay was used you know so like if you're having wipes and things like that this was something that was very hard to get back to this point so you wanted to make sure that you know there are times between pulls where we will legit just kind of stop the raid and then i'll ask everybody to open up my discord stream and we will just go through the replay and then i can just kind of like go over positioning with people and things like that and make sure that everybody understands where they need to be and you know uh let's say for the torments and whatnot so uh, and, and like right here you can see us kind of spreading out and forming the lines where the range and stuff are linking together so right here this is when we're connecting the line with the azeroth thing so let's say that your guild doesn't connect the beam and you need to figure out exactly why and i know a lot of people get kind of confused with you know you know witch hunting with this and obviously it needs to be used with you know constructive criticism in mind and, and whatnot so it's like trying to figure out who's the weak link right so let's say that you had somebody standing this warlock let's say they were standing right here and it didn't link to the mage and then into azeroth you want to make like this is this is where you would find that you would go to the timestamp that you need and then pause it and then just look at everyone's positioning and kind of go from there okay so that would be like a one of the the best usage examples that you could have of the replay. Okay, so we're gonna pick up here with the the next thing. I know we touched on this at the beginning of the video, just kind of like you know what you know what what type of information is found on this website. Uh, you know, you can see all the different categories here, whether that be you know the progress leaderboard, where you can go here and you can look and see you know what guilds, uh, you know top ten world guilds and things like that. You can get information on like pull counts and things of that nature. Um, there's also speed kills, like if you just want, maybe your guild is somebody that's not necessarily going to raid a ton, but you're really focused on getting the, the fastest kills on any given boss and things like that. This is where you would go and you could see the guilds that are, you know, able to kill stuff, you know, in, in very quick fashion. Now the, the one thing to always keep in mind about this is a lot of, you know, top end guilds don't public log, so they're not going to be in here. So like this is going to be basically the leaderboard for the guilds that do have public logs. So that's a, that's a very key point there. It can show you everything between raid comps, you know, duration. You can just go to the log and, you know, let's say that we want to look and see what their raid comp was for Vigilant Guardian Speed Kill. How many healers did they use? How many tanks did they use? This is the type of things that, you know, you would go through here and figure out what they're doing to maybe make the best decisions for your guild with that information in hand. Uh, there's also execution logs this is something where it's basically just like if you're if you're a lot less on the speed kills uh side of things you want to make sure that your guild's really focusing on mechanics and things like that and you know never dying uh you know or, or limiting deaths to as few as possible so you can show up on the you know top of the execution meters that's where this would be is very similar to the speed thing just a different metric um, there's also you know all-star metrics and this is something that gets a little bit uh controversial at times because i know a lot of the stuff you know there's, that's where you get into the pi debate and all that stuff but i mean you can again just sort it by all the different you know metrics that you need whether that's you know mythic or heroic what class or things like that and then you can just kind of look and see you know a, the all-star points are kind of like an arbitrary point system that the website uses uh, i don't know the exact you know uh that's what i'm looking for here algorithm that they have to like calculate these it's not something that we ever really deal with, but if you are someone that's interested in that, I mean, there are there are benefits to being focused on the all-star point system. Again, it's like if you're in a guild that's not necessarily worried about their ranking in any capacity or something like that, you just want to find an area to push yourself in, you can use stuff like that. And you, know, you don't always have to be on like the top of the leaderboard if you just want to use that as like a, you know, something to gauge whether or not you're doing stuff properly or headed in the right direction. That's something that you can look at, you know. Uh, I know I, another one of the things I brought up at the beginning of the video, just kind of browsing through it, and, and when I would go a little bit in more in depth, is if, if this is something where you're just kind of wanting to look at overall statistics, you just click on the three bars here, go to whichever respective fight, and you're going to go to the statistics for that fight, or you can just go to statistics as a whole, either one. And what you want to do here is, you know, you can sort by different percentiles, like if you want the bottom or the top. Generally, one of my personal recommendation would be avoid using like the max percentile because that's when you get into the super degen stuff with the people that have like 15 power infusions and stuff like that. You know, we can do something like 95th percentile and above. Uh, you know, and let's it's you know while it's good to have the rate as a whole listed, you know, let's just go to because there's a lot of context that can be given there. Like if you don't, we won't look at just single target damage. You want to look at something like Skolex and, and you know mythic Skolex or heroic Skolex. And then you can kind of look and see what classes are sh stacking up. Then you can scroll down here and it shows you the actual like sample size for each one of these numbers. How many different parses that it's pulling this data from. And you know you can use this just how you would with any other statistics. Like something that has you know thousands of parses versus something that only has 
you know, 400 parses or something like that, like an affliction lock on skull legs, for example. This you got to be very careful with because if like a, if a, if with a sample size that small, much more impact is had on both ends of the spectrum. Like if somebody's in there doing, you know, zero, it's 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 really skewing the data versus somebody that's doing really you know really high. It's going to really skew where this kind of stacks up on there. So that's generally why you want to just you know look at the larger sample sizes for more refined data. And things like that and again this is pretty much any boss fight like again this single target or if you want to look at something that's a lot more you know aoe you know p3 pantheon or something like that you can kind of go to this and, and engage it but this allows you to kind of look and you know maybe you're thinking about what alt you want to play or maybe you're looking at what what comp your raid needs to run on any given prog fight all this information is information you can find on warcraft logs you just have to know where to look for it so all right, I know that's a lot to digest. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and be sure to keep an eye out on our future videos. We'll be talking a lot more about how to improve as a player in the coming weeks. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.